Okay, hi guys. So I was doing a bit of research on how much potassium rich food like bananas patients can actually have when they get put on certain medicines like ACE inhibitors, for example. So that's a very common question that you get asked when someone starts a blood pressure medicine like Ramipril to reduce their uh, blood pressure that they will often ask, can they take uh, bananas with it? Because there's a warning on it to not take uh, potassium at the same time as it. So I was like, okay, let's get some really specific tailored information so I can better help patients and then better teach like students and interns. And then so the first thing you generally do for a lot of like research is just do a quick Google search because often that can answer a lot of your questions. But to my surprise, most of the hits, so this is the first page in Google when I was searching this. So most of the hits for this were basically just telling you not to have it at all. And obviously you can eat food with potassium while you're on an ACE inhibitor because your body still needs potassium. And it's not like being on an ACE inhibitor pushes up the amount of potassium you have to 100%. But the first few hits are all of them just pretty much saying not to have it. Uh, so if you take blood pressure lowering uh, ACE inhibitors with potassium rich food, uh, so you can get high levels of potassium in your body, which can lead to potential dangerous heart arrhythmias. Uh, so that was, a, I think a doctor wrote that post. I'm not gonna click into them, you can do it yourself. Um, so that's just a Google search, ACE inhibitors and bananas. So food and medications that don't mix, bananas don't eat them. So they're using very blanket statements, like just don't eat them. Um, so ACE inhibitors such as captopril and lisinuril can, can uh, cause your heart uh, can be your heart's best friend. Uh, this was something to do with they'll interact. So eight scary food drug interactions. Uh, so four foods that can mess up your medicines. Uh, so intake of high potassium rich foods like bananas. Uh, so they just said here, they said that you should limit it. Here's a doctor saying, try not to eat bananas or even oranges if you take ACE inhibitors such as captopril and nalopril and fosinopril. Uh, to do there are some, some studies were actually just popping up how they were saying that just eating your bananas can lower your blood pressure. But then they were saying don't um, do it if you're on an ACE inhibitor. Uh, so more studies, seven foods that shouldn't mix. Uh, so five healthy foods that interact with medications. So eating too many potassium rich foods. Like So none of these first few hits were basically properly explaining like they weren't really quantifying why you couldn't do it. So really what you should be doing is looking at the amount of potassium that's in a banana and the amount of potassium your body needs. And then you should be able to then make an estimate uh, based off the patient's risk factors, uh, how much they can eat, which would be safe. Uh, so I decided to do a bit of research myself and look at the studies so I can give more uh, tailored specific advice. So. Firstly, we should ask the question, can normal people, so normal being healthy people without any medical conditions, so they're not, they don't have any underlying health conditions and they are not on any other medicines, they're not taking any medicines, can they even consume enough food to develop hyperkalemia? So hyperkalemia being too much potassium. And the answer to that uh, is pretty much no. So if we look at so we look at this case. Uh, so this one, they when this study looked at it, so this was in 2011, and they only found two case reports of nutritional hyperkalemia in patients without any predisposing medical conditions or medications. And in both of these cases, patients had previously diagnosed psychiatric disorder. So the first case that they found was an adolescent with anorexia nervosa, uh, and they had recurrent hyperkalemia because they were eating up to 20 bananas per day. And then in another one, this patient had schizophrenia, uh, a bunch of other stuff, and they were asked to water restrict, uh, but they kept getting hyperkalemia because they basically replaced water by consuming excessive amounts of orange juice. And then in this actual case that this paper was discussing, they had a patient that kept coming in uh, they wasn't diagnosed with anything, but uh, she kept, she came in, I think, on two occasions, and she had uh, basically the readings of hyperkalemia when they took the blood levels, and then they discovered that she had eaten like a pound of figs on one of the nights. So they were using this as possibly a rationale 
for the fact that this person may have an undiagnosed um, psychiatric disorder um, or eating disorder. And then if you go through the paper, it, it kind of suggests that she might have. So that seems to kind of make sense. So basically, normal healthy people just do not consume enough food to put themselves into hyperkalemia. So if you are, then you, there could be a sign that you have some sort of um, eating disorder, basically. Now, what about people? So we generally will see when someone has hyperkalemia and they present themselves to the hospital or doctor, they generally have a range of um, medical issues and they're on a few different medicines. So we can go through a few case reports that I found on this. All right, first, uh, how much food is needed for hyperkalemia to occur? So if uh, we take an average sized banana, so a medium sized one, that contains enough potassium uh, to give you about 11% of your daily requirement. Uh, so each banana, if it weighs about 150 grams, gives you about 15.2 millimoles of potassium. And according to the WHO, we need about 90 millimoles of potassium a day. So keep that in mind when we are looking at these coming up studies that you one banana, about 11%, so about 10% if we round that down. So you need about 10 bananas and if you were eating nothing else with potassium, that would give you 100%. So, case report one. Now, this patient, uh, they had already mild to moderate chronic renal failure, which is a risk factor for hyperkalemia, and they were on their ACE inhibitor, lisinopril. Uh, but they still didn't fully understand why he developed hyperkalemia. Uh, but then the daughter mentioned that he'd be drinking 2 to 3, uh, 2.3 to 4.5 liters of apple juice a day for several months. And the apple juice that he was drinking actually had extra potassium put into it. Uh, and then so they calculated that, that he was getting about 60 to 120 millimoles of extra potassium just from this juice a day. Uh, and then if we go back to the previous slide, you only need 90 millimoles a day. So he was going way over and the fact that he was on two different, he had renal failure and at lisinopril, they were probably the reasons why this patient was coming in with uh, hyperkalemia. So in case report two, uh, this person was consuming two liters of uh, juice prepared from carrots and apples every day. Um, they estimated the amount of potassium from this was basically 16,000 milligrams of potassium. Now, he also had underlying health conditions, so this person was diabetic, and they were using NSAIDs as well. And then they believed the combination of all three, so the excessive amount of carrots and apple juice, uh, combined with his diabetes and his use of anti-inflammatories, was the cause of his severe hyperkalemia. So the next two case reports are from the same study. So these were two patients from India and they were saying in the studies that basically bananas are very cheap in India and then so sometimes patients will eat um, a bit more of it as it's a cheap uh, nutritional source for the people living there. Uh, so in this case, this patient was, they found that she was eating seven to eight bananas a day of part of her regular diet. And she was on a bunch of other medicines as well. So she was on aldactone, which is a spir um, spiralactone, and that uh, is potassium retaining. She was on ramipril, so an ACE inhibitor, so that also retains potassium. And then they showed that she, um, the serum electrolyte showed she was hyperkalemic. And in here, so they just basically, the hospital just basically told her to reduce the amount of bananas she was eating to one to two bananas a day. Um, and then they also reduced the dose of her potassium sparing diuretic, um, so the aldactone, that one there. And then they actually did follow up appointments with her and they saw no incidence of the hyperkalemia occurring again. So this was an elderly lady, if I remember correctly. Now the next case report was about a child. Um, so he was living in India as well. And he went to hospital first um, for another health reason and was discharged with a few uh, medicines. So he was discharged with uh, captopril and aldactone. So as we know, that's a potassium sparing diuretic. Um, and then he later was readministered to hospital um, with symptoms of hyperkalemia. I think he was getting quite nauseous and dizzy and was thrown up. Um, and then it was revealed that he was eating five to six bananas a day. Uh, so they did their treatment and then they told him to reduce the amount of bananas he was eating every day 
to uh, just one a day. So he was eating a single banana a day and they did follow up appointments and he didn't have any episodes of hyperkalemia again. Now, so this case report, um, quite a sad one. This patient actually died from the hyperkalemia. It was the only one that I could find where the patient had been eating uh, potassium foods at the same time. Now, I don't necessarily think it was a result of it though. So if you go and read the actual full study, so this they defined, when you look at the heading, I think it was a bit misleading. So they said fatal hyperkalemia related to a combined therapy with a COX-2 inhibitor. So that's an NSAID, an ACE inhibitor, so for her blood pressure and a potassium rich diet. So the study only showed that she was eating one banana every day. As, and then the, so that's what they were saying was her potassium rich diet. And they even said in the study that they didn't calculate the amount of total potassium she was getting every day. We don't know anything else about her diet, apart from the fact that she was eating one every day. And if we look at the two other case reports, you can eat one every day, like according to the two other case reports, they, they reduced down the amount of bananas they're eating to one every day and they never got hyperkalemia again. And the, the interesting thing about this current case report um, was that, so this patient was on an ACE inhibitor, but it was a low dose of it. And they were also on this potassium rich diet, so only one banana a day. Uh, they were on this for two years already. And during that two years times, they had her measured her potassium levels and they were normal on two occasions. So the ACE inhibitor and one banana every day was not enough to make her hyperkalemic. When she went into the hospital as a result of the hyperkalemia, she was put on this COX-2 inhibitor, so this NSAID, uh, Rofisococcib. Uh, and then that addition, they think may have been the reason of why she was hyperkalemic. Um, and I'm subject to believe that was the real reason as well. And it may have been the reason independent. I, I think it could have been independent uh, of the fact that we was just eating one banana a day. So this NSAID, basically the company that makes it voluntarily removed themselves from the market um, because information from a recent clinical studies um, showed there was an increase of cardiovascular events such as heart attacks and strokes. Uh, so the company that makes it, they took themselves off the market because of this increased risk of uh, cardiovascular events. So it could have just been purely on the fact that she was taking a, that she was taking the NSAID and the ACE inhibitor. That could have been the reason why she got it. And then if you go into the study itself, it talks about she had a bunch of other potential reasons that might have contributed. Like they think she might have been sepsis, um, but they couldn't confirm that as well. So it. Most likely, I, if I was the guess, it, unless she was eating a bunch of other potassium-rich food, it was unlikely to, to do with the fact that she was eating one every day, as that only gives you 11% of the amount of potassium that your body needs. Um, and then the previous two clinical studies showed that, that they can have the one every day while being on medicines, and that doesn't um, put them into hyperkalemia. But obviously there's a bunch of risk factors at play here that can contribute to it. So the full study um, basically talks about how there could have been other reasons why that she went into hyperkalemia. And there's a few, so basically when a patient comes in there asking about the amount of potassium rich food that they can eat, so bananas and stuff like that, you need to look at their whole overall picture. So. Obviously, none of this has been medical advice, but the when a patient comes and asks you specifically, you need to see, if one, basically, how much bananas are they gonna be eating, or like potassium-rich food, and do they have any of these other risk factors? So increasing age, so in all these case reports, the patients were all quite old, apart from the young boy. Um, are they diabetic? Um, do they have kidney disease? Do they have heart failure? Do they have volume depletion, such dehydration? Um, any cell destruction, so they're suffering from burns or rhabdomyolysis. So all of these contribute to the increased risk of hyperkalemia. Just being on an ACE inhibitor or a sartan on its own already means that there's about 10%, well, they're saying about 10% of all patients that are on these two medicines may experience at least mild hyperkalemia. Um, so that's 10%, so one in 10 basically. But obviously, there's probably a bunch of whole bunch of other risk factors that play at this. Um, 
And then, then also look at what other drugs that are on. So are they taking potassium sparing diuretic? Are they on beta blockers? Are they on NSAIDs? Are they on a bunch of all these ones? Are they taking potassium supplements? Um, what is their diet like? So a lot of salt substitutes, like these low salt um, things to uh, flavor their food, they put potassium in it. Um, are they eating a diet high in potassium rich food? So uh, excess juice, uh, dried fruits, a lot of dried fruits do that. Um, some herbal products will do that as well. Are they on a few antimicrobials? So these ones, there's not many that contribute to it, but all of these ones can. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of factors being at play about whether a patient will become at risk of developing hyperkalemia. So it's not quite really as simple as saying, don't take bananas or um, don't eat bananas at all, like some of those Google studies were saying. Um, and in most cases, for most patients, they're probably okay to eat um, potassium rich food as part of a normal diet, but they don't want their diet itself to be potassium rich um, if they're on these medicines um, and especially if they have other risk factors for that. Okay guys, um, you can find all the studies in the comments and if you want to see the slides again without me talking, um, you can find them on my social media. So that'd be my Instagram and Facebook at Memorize Medicine. Um, and if you need some ways to study, uh, memorizemedicine.com. If you're an intern in Australia, I've written two books to help you pass those exams. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.